says, misunderstood the Savior of sinners. Hung on a cross, he was God's only son. All hear him call his Father in heaven. Not my will, but thine be done. This is one of my favorite verses. It says, if when you try and you fail in your trying, hands sore and scarred from the work you have done, take up your cross. Run quickly to meet him because he'll understand and say, well done. You know the course, don't you? Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life and the battle is what? Carry the staff and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and say, well done. Aren't you glad? That at the end of this life, after you have toiled and, and worked to the close of the day to open your eyes on the other side in that great gift of morning and hear the words of your master, servant, well done. Let me tell you something. Everybody won't hear those words. Because everybody is not working in the vineyard. This parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 teaches us at least five lessons about our work on this side before the close of the day and we open our eyes on the other side. The first lesson I believe this parable teaches us is that success is only a product of your work. Hello, let me say it again. Success is only a product of your work. In the book of Genesis, God places Adam in the Garden of Eden and he commissions him to work it to tend to it, to take care of it. And brothers and sisters, as Christians, we have to come to the realization that we have a mission that God expects us to accomplish in the here and now. There are far too many Christians today who only see their salvation as a bus ticket to heaven. They purchase the bus ticket and they believe that it doesn't matter what they do while they're here on earth, they're just sitting on the bench waiting for the death bus to come through. No, the parable teaches us that we have to work for the kingdom. We're, we're to do something for the kingdom. We're to use our gifts and our skills and our talents to the glory of God and for the furtherance of the kingdom. The parable teaches us that success is only a product of your work. My question to you is, are you working? Are you working for the kingdom? Not only does the parable teach us that success is only a product of our work, but the parable also teaches us that God gives us everything we need to do what we've been called to do. Everything you need. Everything you need, you already have it in order to accomplish the purpose for which you were placed on planet Earth. Have you ever wondered what a talent is worth in today's dollars? It's, it's kind of hard to know for sure 
Yet, whatever its exact value in the New Testament, a talent indicates a large sum of money. Some philosophers say that it may have been as much as a million dollars if you count it in today's currency. And we're tempted to feel sorry for the servant who received only one talent, but in reality, he received as much as a million dollars from the master, and he took it and he buried it in his backyard. He was given more than enough to meet the master's expectations. And just as the master expected his servants to do more than to passively preserve what had been entrusted to them, so God expects us to generate a return by using our talents toward productive goals. Servants were given enough to produce more. And it's the same with the gifts that God has given you. He's given you enough to produce more. The Apostle Paul references this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He expects us to work in order to He's given us everything we need in order to succeed. But then thirdly, I believe the parable teaches us that we are not all created equally. Are you with me? We're not all created equally. We don't have all of the gifts that everybody else might have. There is a great diversity in the kingdom. And I'm so glad that God never gives one person all the gifts. Because if one person had all the gifts, then they would not need to benefit from the gift of somebody else. Thank God you have a gift. And my gift might not be like your gift. And your gift might not be like my gift. But when we get all the gifts working together in the body, then everybody gets ministered to. I need your gift. I need your gift. I need to be ministered to by your gift, even if your gift is just listening, even if your gift is just praying. Your gift is an important gift within the body of Christ. Some people can't enjoy their own gift for coveting the gifts of other people. I said some people can't enjoy their own talents because they're too busy being jealous about the talent that God has given to somebody else. Everybody don't have what we call the fourth of July. Gifts. Everybody don't get the microphone in their hand, but if your job is to sweep the floor, then you sweep the floor with as much zeal and vigor as the person who is on the stage, because one day God will understand. Yes, he will. And he's going to say, well, For our own selfish purposes. 
Let me say it again. It teaches us that we work for the master and not for our own selfish purposes. Let me say it again. It teaches us. Let me say it another way. That we work for the Lord's glory and not for our own glory. And if anybody gives you a pat on the back or an applause, it's okay to accept it. But before you accept it, you make sure you say to God, be the glory. We work for his glory. I said we work for his glory. And at the close of the day, we want to make sure he got the praise. If he gets the praise, then you will get the blessing. And all I want is the blessing. Give God the praise. Because he's the only one that's worthy of the praise. Do I have any witnesses in here? I said he's the only one who's worthy of the praise. Take this box up and put the cash. 
He'll understand. And the same will be done. Father, we preach your word. I pray that someone's heart has been touched. If someone does not know you in the pardon of their sin, I pray that they get to know you before it's everlasting too late. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand together, those who are in the sanctuary, we extend the privilege of the church. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, today is a good day to get to know him. You're here and you're visiting and you're in search of a church home. This invitation is for you as well. Won't you come?
We'll wait to fight you.